and some very um, small little holes around where we put that stringer in. This is what drives people nuts, and I love it, but it works so well. Now, normally I would use water, but seeing we've got a stream happening, I want it to go off pretty quick, so I'm going to use methylated spirits. And what I've got here is plaster paris, container, and some metho. Two teaspoons should do or something. Don't use spackle, it doesn't work. Okay, doesn't matter if you use too much because it's not that expensive. All right, metho. Mix up the plaster. A little bit too much metho, so we'll just put a bit more plaster in there. The reason I'm using plaster, uh, metho is it evaporates a lot quicker, which means the plaster goes off quicker. If I was using water, it would take a little bit longer. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so that's how you want it. So it's just like that. Like a good cake mix. Then grab a bit of rag. Dip it in the plaster or put a bit of plaster on what you're doing and circular motions, just rub it in. And what you'll find is it's such a fine mixture that it will go into all the little nooks and crannies that you didn't get when you sanded or little voids or crevices that have been left behind. Go clockwise, anti-clockwise, doesn't really matter. But what you're looking for is to fill up any possible little holes that you've left. Nearly finished. There you go, you can all say that's ruined too. But we'll leave that until we've finished a bit more and then you'll absolutely be gobsmacked with the result. All right, now this is a bit of marquetry we've been working on the last three weeks. And that white stuff on there is Plaster Paris. I'll just put this tongue oil away. <clears throat> and the reason I use it is because it fills in all the little hairline cracks and grain and <clears throat> what have you that um, you might miss. Now you, you don't want it to fill huge voids. If you're going to do something like that, um, I would suggest you use wood putty. Um, the one I like is, what's it called? Timber mate. Um, that's actually made in, in Melbourne, I think. But the reason I like that, good day, Errol, if you're watching. The reason I like it is you can mix it with other colours. It's water based and you can actually water it down to a slurry and use it as a grain fill as well. And uh, it doesn't change colour. A lot of the spirit based ones that I've used in the past, you can match it to the colour of the timber and then when you spray your timber, your timber darkens and this doesn't. Oh, that's another trick. If you're going to use wood putty, put a coat of whatever it is you're going to put on before you put the putty in and match it to the darkened colour of the wood. But then when you finish putting a, a finish on this, 
it doesn't change color, whereas the oil ones do. So that's my experience anyway. Okay, what have I got here? I want a bit of Scotch Bright, have I got any? There we go, I do, look at that. All right, <clears throat> so that looks a bit abysmal at the moment. And this that I'm using here is just uh, a Scotch Bright. There's a brush. Give it a bit of brush off. Watch this. I love this. This is raw linseed oil. Not boiled, raw. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of my rag. I might do half, then you can see the difference. And all of a sudden, that plaster Paris you put on there actually goes translucent. And disappears. But what you're left with is just the beautiful colours of the timber coming through and you can't see that white powder at all. So I'll just finish that off. And those that have been following, I think this is three weeks, three streams to do this show. And I've decided I'm going <clears> to <throat> keep on with the box, so I'll actually finish the box off as well. And there it is. Whoa. So on the outside, that white ring on the outside is a Swiss pear. Then the next orangey timber in is New Guinea rosewood. The dark and light timber in the middle of that is palisand or Rio rosewood. The shell is called to cherry, and the mouth of the shell, which is this bit in here, is also rear rosewood cut on a bias. And then we get these dark areas by burning it in hot sand. So I might just finish the whole top, and then it's even. Eventually I'll French polish this, and when you French polish it, oh my goodness, doesn't it look nice? Uh, this will be a cigar humidor when it's finished. And for those of you that missed it, we also did that little inlay in the corner there. Same process. Okay. Yeah, that's my party trick whenever I'm running a marketry course. And you can just see people, you know, spend a day and a half doing their job and they end up putting the white stuff all over it. And they, oh, yuck, you ruined it. And then they come back after having a cup of tea or whatever and it's pop. It just pops out.